Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for January 1st. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. This is an exciting day as we start our journey going through the Bible and having a devotion that goes along with it. So today we're starting with a, a daily reading involving Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and Matthew chapter 1. And of course, in the coming days throughout the year, we'll have a devotion on one of these passages, really going back and forth. So today is Matthew. Um, tomorrow will be Genesis. Then the next day it will be Matthew and back to Genesis, going from um, New Testament to Old Testament and then back to New Testament again. So we'll be going through that pattern so you can expect that kind of um, that order throughout the year. Um, so I want to encourage you to make a commitment to read the Bible every day. Uh, but this is, if this is not something you've ever done before, you're, it's going to be an exciting journey. It is going to be one of discipline, but also one of great discovery. And I hope that you commit also to listening to the devotionals as I will help to bring out little truths and um, try to apply the scriptures to our lives, and even just in a small way. So the devotions will run from um, between about five minutes and about about 10 minutes, usually in the middle, somewhere around seven minutes. So, well, let's begin. Um, the title of my devotional is God with us. What a great way to begin the year. And we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter one, verse 23, which says, behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. This is the first scriptural quotation in Matthew, and he has many throughout the gospel. And in the first couple of chapters, he has five. And this is the first of them that we see. And it's extremely important. It elaborates on the angel's declaration to Joseph, explaining the meaning of Jesus' name, his being, as in who he is, but also his mission. The birth of Jesus by the Holy Spirit, which we see in Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 says the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit and so we see the origin of Jesus um, in terms of coming as a man was through the agency of the Holy Spirit God himself brought this about it was a, a new creative even act now, this doesn't mean that Jesus didn't exist before, but now he's taking on the form of a servant. And it is very much a new man. Uh, before there was Adam was created, and now we have Jesus being brought about through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus' birth is separated from all other births, and especially from all other even miraculous births that we see in Scripture. This has never happened before. And our verse makes this clear uh, in verse um 23 in that um, this child will be called Emmanuel, that is God with us. So God has become a man. The Son of God has come taking on the form of a servant as Philippians 2 tells us um, and Jesus himself is God incarnate. And of course, we just celebrated Christmas, so this isn't something new. If we wanted to look at other passages too, we could see Luke chapter 1 verse 35 and John chapter 1 verse 14 goes along with this perfectly. His mission is expressed by the very meaning of his name. We see um, that in verse 21, she will bear a child and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means the Lord saves, as in Yahweh saves. Uh, the, God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is the one who saves. And specifically, he will save his people from their sins. That's talking about Yahweh will save, and in this case, Jesus, the, the one who has been born of the virgin, will save his people from their sins. And then we have that his salvation is the fulfillment of God's very first promise. So this is the first quotation um, in Matthew, and it refers back to the very first promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Immediately after the fall, remember that we have the, the promise given to, to the serpent. 
I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. It's talking about the destruction of the serpent, of the snake, of the devil. That while he has gained um, dominion over the man through this, sin now is going to reign. There's coming a day where God will bring a reversal to this. And it will be brought about through the woman's seed. And it's an awesome, awesome prediction or prophecy concerning the virgin's birth that the woman not the man the woman will give birth to a child um, without the agency of a man um, and this seed this um, man will crush the serpent's head and of course that's exactly what happens that's what Isaiah 7 verse 14 is prophesying this is um, what um, Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 is quoting and so it's referring back to, to Isaiah 7.14, to Genesis 3.15, um, and it declares that salvation from sin is also salvation from the enemy of humanity, uh, Satan. And all of this is going to be done away with by Jesus Christ. He's going to do away with sin, with evil, but also with the evil one, Satan, once and for all. And he does that on the cross. So this verse explains that in Jesus' birth, God is with his people in a new way. It also sums up the entirety of the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew ends on this high note of God being with us. Remember, Matthew 28, verse 20 says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is with us. God is with us in Jesus Christ. And that's the awesome thing about Matthew's Gospels, that Jesus doesn't leave them. He stays with them. He's with them always. Through all the difficult times that will come, he's with us. And so the first scriptural quotation and Jesus' last words in the gospel are the same. God's abiding presence with us. What an incredible gospel. In Jesus Christ, God delivers us from sin and Satan and promises us, promises to always be with us. In spite of how things may appear, do you trust that God is always with you? This year, will you seek to know him in a greater way? For he's the one who is always with us, always faithful, always there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that, Lord, your, your name, Jesus, uh, means that you will save us uh, you will deliver us, and specifically, you will save us from our sin, and you will always be with us. We can depend on you. We can come into your presence. We can be with you forever because of your work for us, because you care for us. And so we give you praise. We thank you. We can have hope for this coming year that because you're with us, all things are possible. Because you're with us, we can look forward to what the future has. So, Lord, we pray that you'll give us the strength, that, Lord, we'll continue to look to you. Help us to stay in your word uh, and see great things this year. In your name we pray. Amen.